This video introduces some of the ideas and key formulas of Taylor series. One of the main ideas behind Taylor series is the idea of approximating functions with polynomials. So suppose we have some function f of x. We want to approximate this function with a polynomial, and we'd like the approximation to be good near x equals 0. And we're going to assume that f prime of 0 exists, and f double prime of 0 exists, and f's third derivative exists at 0. All of its derivatives, we're going to assume, exist at x equals 0. Now, if we just want to get f's value right at 0, we could approximate f with the constant function, y equals f of 0. We can think of this constant function as being a degree 0 polynomial approximation, but it's a pretty lousy approximation. We can do much better than this. In fact, we can do a lot better even if we just use a degree 1 polynomial. That's a linear function. As you know, the tangent line at x equals 0 is a linear function that provides a pretty good approximation for the actual function when x is near 0. At least it's the best approximation you can hope for out of a linear function. The equation for the tangent line is given by y equals f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x. This comes straight from the point-slope form for a line where m is the slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative at 0, and the point x1, y1 is just the point 0, f of 0. So we get y minus f of 0 is f prime of 0 times x minus 0, which simplifies to that equation for the tangent line right there. Notice that the tangent line has the same value as f of x at x equals 0, and it has the same slope as f of x at x equals 0. But I'd like to do a little better than this. I'd like to approximate my function f of x with a polynomial that has the same value, the same slope, or first derivative, and the same second derivative as f of x at x equals 0. It turns out I can do this with a degree 2 polynomial and I'll show you how. In general, a degree 2 polynomial, also called a quadratic, is a polynomial of the form p of x equals c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x plus c sub 2 times x squared. And now I just have to figure out what values of the constants c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2 will make my polynomial agree with my function in its value first derivative and second derivative. Well, if I want p of 0 to equal f of 0, then that means I want c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times 0 plus c sub 2 times 0 squared to equal s value at 0. In other words, c sub 0 had better be equal to f of 0. But now I also want p prime of 0 to equal f prime of 0 p prime of x is equal to c sub 1 plus 2 times c sub 2 x. I'm just using my derivative rules on the equation for p, remembering that my c's are constants. Therefore, to evaluate p prime of 0, I just plug in 0 for x, and I get c sub 1. But this needs to equal f prime of 0, and therefore, c sub 1 is equal to f prime of 0. Finally, I want p double prime of 0 to equal f double prime at 0. I can find p double prime of x by taking the derivative of my derivative. So that gives me 2 times c2, but that needs to equal f double prime of 0 means that c2 had better equal f double prime of 0 divided by 2. So now let's look what happened. Requiring that p has the same value at 0 as f forces c sub 0 to have the value of f of 0. Requiring that the polynomial and f have the same first derivative at 0 forces the value of c sub 1 to equal f prime of 0. 
and requiring that the polynomial and the function have the same second derivative at zero forces the value of c2 to be f double prime of zero divided by two. So we've shown that there is a second degree polynomial that has the same value first derivative and second derivative as f at x equals zero, and there's a unique such polynomial, and it's given by p of x equals f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero over two times x squared. Visually, that second degree polynomial is going to look like a parabola. It might look something like this. Let's play this game again. But this time, I want to find a degree three polynomial, p of x, such that p of zero is the same as f of zero, p prime of zero is the same thing as f prime of zero, p double prime of zero is equal to f double prime of zero, and p's third derivative at zero is the same as f's third derivative at zero. Graphically, that's going to be a cubic polynomial that approximates my function, and it's going to be a pretty close approximation. We know that a degree three polynomial in general has the form c sub zero plus c sub one x plus c sub two x squared plus c sub three x cubed, and we need to find the values of all the constant c's. Please pause the video and see if you can figure out the values of those constants, especially the value of c sub three in terms of the value of f and its derivatives at zero. If we write down the derivatives of p, we get the following expressions. And if we evaluate these expressions at x equals zero, all the terms with x's in them vanish. So we get these expressions. Now because we want our polynomial's value and its derivatives to match the value and derivatives of our function, we get these equations from which we can solve for our constants. c sub zero is f of zero, c sub one is f prime of zero, c sub two is f double prime of zero over two, and c sub three is the third derivative of f at zero divided by six. Notice that that number six came from multiplying three times two, and that three and that two came from bringing down my successive exponents when I took derivatives. We can keep track of this process by rewriting c sub three as the third derivative of f at zero divided by three times two or three factorial. So the third degree polynomial that approximates our function is p of x, which is f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero over two times x squared plus f's third derivative at zero over three factorial times x cubed. I'll write this as p sub three to remember it's the third degree polynomial. We can repeat this process to get a fourth degree polynomial whose value at zero is the same as f of zero and whose first four derivatives at zero are the same as f's first four derivatives at zero. Please pause the video and either work out expressions for the coefficients of p sub four, or else make an educated guess what those coefficients should be based on the patterns you see. You should get that the fourth degree polynomial has the same first terms as the third degree polynomial, and has a final term of f's fourth derivative at zero over four factorial times x to the fourth. If we continue this process forever, finding polynomials of higher and higher degree that match more and more derivatives of f, then in the limit, we'll have infinitely many terms that look like this. This is an infinite series, and it can be written in summation notation as the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f at zero 
divided by n factorial times x to the nth power. This works as long as we use the conventions that the zeroth derivative means just the function, that zero factorial is equal to one, and that x to the zero is just equal to one, even if x is zero. This infinite series is called the Maclaurin series for f of x. And it's also called the Taylor series for f of x, centered at x equals zero. Now, so far we've been focusing on the value of f and its derivatives at x equals zero. What if we wanted to approximate f of x near x equals a? Please pause the video and write down what you think the Taylor series centered at x equals a should look like. This is a series, I'll call it t of x, that we want to match f's value at a, and we want all of its derivatives to match f's derivatives at a. It makes sense that this series should have a formula similar to the formula we just found, but it should involve derivatives at a instead of derivatives at zero. In addition, the formula needs to involve powers of x minus a instead of powers of x. I'll leave you to think about the details and to verify that this series really does have the derivatives that we want it to have. In this video, we tried to approximate a function by polynomials that had the same value and derivatives at x equals zero, and we ended up with a formula for a Taylor series at x equals zero which we generalized to a Taylor series centered at x equals a.